This video will cover advanced options for projects, such as downloading your project, enabling optional modules, and adding and managing users for your project. First, let's take a look at the two project tabs we didn't cover, Other Functionality and Project Revision History. Other Functionality has many useful features for your REDCap project. For example, you can use this page to make a copy of your project. This creates an exact duplicate of the project, including users and project records. You can use this feature if you are creating a second project, similar to one you've already made. Instead of rewriting all the questions and re-adding users, you only have to make small modifications. You can also use this to test out large changes in the project to see how they would affect your data or to preview how the project would look before making changes to your main project database. You can also download a backup of the project as an XML file, including metadata for the project setup, the data dictionary, and collected data. You can upload these XML files when creating a new REDCap project. Under Project Management, you have three options. Delete the project completely, erase all of the project's data, or archive the project. Archiving a project moves it off your list of My Projects so that it doesn't clutter the page. When your project's in production, you'll also have the option to move the project to inactive status. You can still run reports and export data, but you'll no longer be able to enter new data into the project. The Project Revision History page primarily takes effect once your project is in production mode. Every time you change your project in production mode, REDCap automatically saves a copy of the previous data dictionary. This way, if you no longer want the change, or if you overwrite something and didn't notice until later, you can revert to an earlier copy of the data dictionary. In the Online Designer, you can create a snapshot of the project even before you're in production by clicking Create Snapshot of Instruments. That snapshot will be in your project revision history, along with the copies automatically saved by REDCap. Next, let's look over a few more options on the Project Setup page. This will be your landing page while your project is in development. In the main project settings, you can enable surveys and longitudinal data collection within the project. You can also change the project title, purpose, and any additional project notes. Enable optional modules and customizations allows you to add or remove some additional features. For example, by default, all records are auto-numbered, meaning REDCap will just assign each record 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, unless you turn it off and number your records manually. You can also turn on repeatable instruments here. Under Additional Customizations, you can set a custom record label. By default, the record label is just the record ID, but you can also manually insert information. In any record where the participant has supplied their first and last name, you can insert the data from that field into the record label to easily find the participants. If you want to have a field besides the record ID that must have a unique value for each participant, you can define that here. You can also order the records by a field other than the record ID. By default, the field's comment log and the data history widget are enabled. These allow you to better keep track of the data entered into your project. You can also display a today slash now button next to all date time fields. Back on the project setup page, setup project bookmarks allows you to create quick bookmarks stored on the left-hand menu that let you jump to pages either inside or outside the project. User rights and permissions are how you add and manage the users on your project. To add a new user, go to the User Rights page and enter their REDCap username under Add New Users. If you don't know their exact username, start typing to see suggested users. Then click Add with Custom Rights to select their privileges and choose how long they could access the project. Project Design and Setup, User Rights, 
and data access group privileges should only be given to people who need those rights in your project. Project Design and Setup allows people to modify the data dictionary and the general design and setup. User Rights is the ability to add and remove users from the project and to change what individual users can do within the project. Data access groups are similar to user rights, but on a group level. Next, define what rights a user has for exporting data. No access, de-identified, remove all tagged identifier fields, or full rights to export the full data set. De-identified is the default option and means that all tagged identifier fields and freeform text fields are removed. Other privileges include accessing the calendar tool, importing data en masse, looking at the file log, or accessing files stored in the file repository. Next, you can give users access to the RegCap mobile app. The mobile app is a completely separate application that does not give full access to RegCap. It's designed to collect data offline that can be synced with your project later. Next, you can give users the ability to create, rename, and delete records, and say whether or not they can lock or unlock records. If a record is locked, none of the information in it can be changed. Finally, choose the data entry rights for each form in your project. You can say that someone can't access a form at all, that they can only read it, or that they can read and edit. For surveys, you can choose if they can edit submitted survey responses. When you're done, click Add User. If you have many people in your project who are all going to be doing similar things, you can create a role, such as Data Entry Role, that has a specific set of rights. Then, instead of adding each person individually and checking off all the same boxes, you can assign them to that role, and everyone will have the same rights. Data access groups are primarily used on multi-site projects to create a number of different groups. Once assigned, they will only be able to see the data that those at their specific site entered. They will not be able to see the information for any other site to better manage project access at each site.